Hello everyone, I'm Zach Peterson and I'm coming to you today to talk about copper fills and how these are used in the Flux platform. Now copper fills are something that you'll find on a lot of PCBs. I think sometimes people include or use copper fills without really thinking about why they would be used. Now copper fills do serve some useful purposes in a PCB layout and we're going to talk about some of those purposes briefly in this video. If you're not sure what a copper fill is, I will show you some examples so that you can get familiar with the concept, and I'll also show you what they look like inside the Flux platform. So go ahead and follow along in Flux when we get to that point in the video. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we take a look at fills in the Flux PCB editor, what I want to do is show everyone what fills look like on a real printed circuit board. So on my screen, what I've done is I found a stock image of a printed circuit board with copper fill. And I don't normally use stock images to do these kinds of demos, but sometimes you find a good one. And this is a really good example of a PCB that uses copper fill. So if you just zoom in here in this curved section of the image, this is a trace that's carrying a signal, and this particular board is for an RF component. Here you can see how this area where the signal is located is a bit lighter color than this background. So that's because there's copper underneath this solder mask. So if you look around in this other area where you see all these drilled via holes, this area is also filled up with copper, and so that is copper fill. It essentially fills in all this unused area of the circuit board with copper. And on the back side of this circuit board, you've also got copper that is filled in everywhere except areas where you need to separate signals or where you need to mount components. So this light green area is where you have copper fill. And all of these vias that are located around this area um, are stitching vias. And so they are used to connect the copper fill on the top layer to the copper fill on the bottom layer, as well as copper that's on intermediate layers. Now, if you look in this region here where my mouse is, you'll see that it's actually a bit darker in here. So this is where copper has been etched away during the manufacturing process. So this etched region um, appears to be a little bit of a darker green hue against the solder mask. And that is because all of that copper has been removed. So just by looking at the surface of a finished PCB, you can actually tell whether or not there is copper fill on the surface layers. So if we just go to this other example, you can see here that this particular PCB has a lot of traces on it, and you can see some pads here as well um, that are being covered up by solder mask. But what you don't have is you don't have copper fill anywhere. So all of this copper fill that was present on this board has been removed from this board. So all of that copper has been etched away. And you just have the traces here that appear to be a little bit of a lighter green color. And then you can see here you have the vias that are sticking through the solder mask and um, are clearly visible against the background. So some of these other vias are also covered up with solder mask, but you can generally tell again just by looking at this that the copper fill has been removed from this particular board. Now sometimes copper fill is also visible through the solder mask. So the solder mask is removed from the copper fill and then that copper is visible. So this is another example of a board that uses copper fill and stitching vias and these stitching vias are placed in a regular array and then that copper fill has been allowed to poke through the solder mask here. So they manually remove the solder mask in their EDA tool. That is what copper fill is. And then stitching vias are an important part of this because they go right along with copper fill. There's a couple of reasons that stitching vias appear in these regular arrays like this. So this just happens to be a, a square array. Um, but with some uh, EDA tools, you will actually see like a diamond array of stitching vias. So the reason that these are in a square array is First, it's actually very easy to define the vertical and horizontal distance between vias in a lot of EDA tools. And so this is what you can do in Flux with the fills feature. You can actually specify this uh, array spacing or the spacing between the vias in this array. And then the PCB editor um, inside Flux will automatically apply that uh, to the board. The other reason that uh, the vias are automatically spaced like this is because this spacing can actually be used in RF boards to control uh, electromagnetic emissions 
from the edge of the board. So these uh, vias are arranged like this with a particular spacing to provide some level of shielding and to prevent uh, noise from uh, being emitted from the board edge. Just because you have a noise problem in your PCB doesn't mean it's automatically going to be solved by adding in copper fill and stitching vias. There's a bit more uh, that you have to know about signal integrity to solve some of those noise problems, but that is one of the functions of stitching vias. We also have some vias that are lining this path like this. Now this particular image just happens to be the back side of this board. And then you can see on this board, we have all of these vias lined up like this along this path. These actually have to be placed manually. So if you wanted to place a, a row of vias like this along this signal path inside Flux, you would have to actually apply those by hand. So just keep that in mind. The stitching via tool will not automatically apply this uh, irregular array of vias uh, right here along this signal path where you see my mouse moving. In this project, um, I've added a ground ground net to the schematic. So as long as you have a ground net in the schematic, you'll be able to uh, see fills in the PCB layout. Then inside the PCB editor, um, inside the layers panel, just click this button here, and then the fill will appear. So you can see that it automatically applies clearance and everything like that. And then you can add stitching vias to this fill just as a design rule. So all you'd have to do is uh, go over to the object specific rules and then look for stitching vias. And we'll show you how to do that in another video. For now, I just wanna discuss why fills are enabled by default. By default, fills are enabled because, uh, well, for a few reasons. But one of those reasons is because sometimes uh, on these internal layers, you do need a ground plane very close to these lines. Um, some examples would be if you're doing high-speed design and having a fill on this inner layer allows you to do that. So very simple, it's applied automatically and um, it's always going to give you that ground connection that you need uh, in this PCB. This ground connection uh, is automatically applied to this fill. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is connected to a ground connection in the top part of the PCB layout. So in order to do that, you would need to place a via between, let's say, the ground pin of this PCB and uh, then that will then connect to this uh, plane on this internal layer. And you may need to do multiples of those connections, so that's important to note. Um, however, you'll see here up on the top layer that this capacitor connects directly to this fill on this top layer. And so we could then use the stitching via feature to force this top layer of copper to then connect to this mid layer of copper. So another reason that you might uh, choose to keep fills at all times in your uh, PCB is uh, for thermal problems. So not necessarily for thermal problems, but to um, help with heat distribution around the PCB. So some components can run really hot, they'll generate a lot of heat, and in order to prevent that heat from building up a hot spot in one part of the board, having copper fill on the next layer and on your top layer, or the same layer as the component, will help move that heat away from that component and it will create a more even temperature distribution throughout the board. So that's another important reason. Here in this example where I have this plane on layer, uh, on the second layer or mid layer one, um, it would also be a good idea to have a plane on mid layer two. So you can see it here, mid layer two. You can use the connected uh, layers uh, rule to set which layers uh, this fill is going to be enabled on. So if you have it on mid layer one, you should also do it on mid layer two. And this would allow you to do a pretty common stack up for high speed design, which would be signal and power on the top layer and on the bottom layer. And then your two internal layers will be ground. So that's actually a very common stack up for high speed design and having fills enabled in Flux by default allows you to do this very easily. So those are some of the reasons we include fills. Um, the other reason is that we don't necessarily want people to just draw out fills every single time. So other design platforms are gonna require you to draw out this big fill uh, region manually, and then you would have to copy it in 
in between all of these layers. In Flux, we just eliminate that and we help you be as fast as possible so that you can very quickly get your PCB designed and sent in for manufacturing. Okay, everybody, so I hope this has been a very useful introduction on the topic of fills in the Flux platform. We'll have another video coming out that will show you how to use fills and how to enable and disable the stitching vias in your PCB layout. Make sure you subscribe and you can keep up with all of the videos. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.